fact that there's probably a few, fewer guys than there might have been. Is this Nick Saban here? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Does that kind of put a greater emphasis on the local recruiting grounds? Yeah, I've, I've been putting more emphasis on that. I just, I do think this, this fuel crisis is going to pay, you know, it affects everything. It does affect just, it affects flying, it affects recruiting, it affects uh, kid, mm -hmm. parents wanting to see their kids play. Uh, so I could, you know, yeah. Really big guys for you this year, including uh, Kenny Tate, and Andrew Lamette. What are you just going to see out there this year? Of course, Kenny has Gary Austin, Jones, and Kenny Tate. Well, I think, you know, Kenny's going to want to get the mix, so we going to give him every opportunity to get in there. What was the question on Darius? Obviously, and it's going to be a lot of Darius is a first one. He's a projected first one pick this year in the draft. And obviously, being double team right you now. I think Darius. He's a very good player, but still has a lot of growth to go. I think. Uh, well, I think he's got more amount, amount of cuts at full speed. Um, so, he's, a, he's a wonderful kid. He has a tremendous work ethic. I think those are the. You know, but you just can't run by guys. You got to be able to run out, catch the ball. Like that. Do you feel like a DC area in Baltimore and the ocean and all the control and all the schools? You gotta speak up, like you Sorry, uh, do you feel like a DC area in Baltimore, like, you know, all the schools we come in and kind of keep you guys in town, take this one happy valley? You know, you have to talk with Baltimore's son on that, but the, the uh, you know, you know, we're, we're doing okay. We're getting our fair share of kids. You're not going to get every kid out of Maryland. I mean, but we're getting more than we lose. And, uh, the thing I, I get a little frustrated about is the kids we do get are very successful. Whereas that's not necessarily the case when they go to other schools. So, but I don't ever hear a story written about that. Coach, I know I'm a little late for part of this question, but why is it that when a new offense comes into this league, more than in other leagues, you know, big, you know, when you came to Maryland first year Orange Bowl, you know, Boston College last year, Jaggies has tweaked their offense a little bit, ten wins. What you know? Now Paul Johnson's here with another new offense, and I heard you earlier saying this offense will work in this league. What is it about here that it just explodes the way it does? You just haven't seen it, you know? mm -hmm. and uh, you still got to have the people to, to run it. So, uh, that that's that, that's I think that's the part that you know people are curious about because you're really not doing it with the players that you brought in to do that system. You you were with, I was with Ron's I, kids. I, These are with Tom's kids. You know, I was very fortunate. We had a. Well, Calvin McCall was our starting quarterback, and he decided to quit. And, I let him quit. You know, he was either in or out. He wanted to be out. And then you know, Sean Hill, I think, came in and I wish I had him for three or four years. I think he was a winner. I think he was very athletic, very coachable. So I was up in Maryland when all that went down. I remember you saying back then that, you know, I know what I'm doing. You know. They need to buy into what I'm doing, and you know, is, is it because it's a first-year thing and because it's all new and fresh? Is that why it it tends to work a little bit around here? It, it depends on the you know on the, on the players. I think it was easier for my guys to buy in because they hadn't won it so long, and then when they started winning, you know, remember the first play in my head coach career went the other yards. Way. <laughs> and we were about ready to chuck it in there. I said, hey man, we got 59 more minutes to play. <laughs> it's a long one. You know, that was the last point they got that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, so, you know, it's just, it's hard to tell what, what kids think. You know, it's, you know, two years ago I kept telling them, you know, you got to win the moment. There's so many times within a game where who's going to make this play? And, and 
a lot of times it becomes battle of wills. And when you win those moments, you usually win the game if they have a good season. When you lose those moments, the unfortunate thing happens that you start, you start losing the confidence that you can win those moments. So it's a momentum type thing. How, how welcome would it be to be able to have a starting, starting quarterback names first week of camp? And how likely is that? Maybe the second week of camp. I think we'll do it. Second week? And I, like I said to the other media, I said, uh, it's not the right one, we'll make a change. I think, I think the strength we have, Patrick, is we have three guys that have had experience and have had one. And so um, it wouldn't surprise me for us to play them all. That wouldn't, I mean, that, that could be a possibility. Man. Just depend on who's hot. Is it, is it different for you from last year where you really didn't know what, what you had? Well, we had nobody that had any experience last year. That was the difference. See, that's the thing that I, I don't think people take into account. I mean, yeah, you would like to have a guy who's a guy, but, you know, we've, we've got guys that have been in games that have been successful in games. So, it's like any other position for me. We've got some depth there. You know, you know, let's say you know, one of them get hurt. Well, the guy's got to come in and play. Well, a lot of teams, when you're doing that, you're bringing in a guy that's never played. So you can't be as good. You know? And so, I mean, you got you got a guy like uh, like Portis. I mean, there, there may be situations where you want to bring him in and use his athleticism. Uh, but I mean, that's up to James. I mean, but I mean. I, I, I did approach him in the spring about having him live for scrimmages because the one thing we don't get to evaluate in the spring is we blow the whistle when someone comes free or the play breaks down. And that could be the strongest part of his game. And of course, I don't want to get him hurt, but I, you know, I told him to go talk it over with his mother and they came back and didn't want to do that. So then he gets in the scrimmage and wants to do it. I said, no, no, we made this. <laughs> We're going to make this call ahead of time. This is not going to be an emotional thing. Because <laughs> you know, I'm not having your mother coming back here. So you got him hurt. <laughs> but I did. I would thought that now he could see what, what, what's this guy going to do when he can make a good play out of a bad play. And, and that's a... That's a pretty nice facet to have in your offense. I mean, I had that with Sean Jones, you know, when I was in Georgia Tech. I mean, I remember Duke was about to beat us one year. And the last play of the game, he scrambled 65 yards for a touchdown. That was, that was a great job of coaching right there. I think, is it possible that you might, you probably won't tell me this, but is it possible you'd line up two quarterbacks in the backfield and say, well, I mean, I, that would be, no, I'll take it all. And James would make that decision on me. So, I mean, I, I'd have to look at it and see if it had any merit. But, you know, there might be some merit to it. The uh, the scheme, you know, call the West Coast scheme, I think a lot of people think it is. Just, do you think that suits Jordan's talents pretty well? I mean, or is too much be, is too much being made of this? I have to, uh, I mean, what's kind of happened? You got, you got, what started out was Bill Walsh and stuff, and that short timing yes. routes, throw the ball quick, blah, 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 blah. And then you kind of had Don Coriel stuff, which Gibbs was, it kind of was a lot of my stuff. Was but now it's gotten so integrated, I can't tell one from the other. I mean, the, the stuff that Coriel did that you know, James is doing, but he's put it in West Coast terminology, mm -hmm. and this, this, I still see some of the three-step stuff and, and, and slide protection, and you know, I can't tell the difference, to be honest with you. It's just kind of a animal game. It's, it's kind of like uh, it's become Americanized. It's all <laughs> all these nationalities <laughs> come together. The melting pot <laughs> offense is that what we should call it? Yeah, I mean, really. I mean, 